Vivek Wadhwa is a distinguished scholar and he teaches at Harvard, Duke and now a visiting scholar at UC Berkeley. Vivek, it's a pleasure to welcome you. Nice to be here, Matthew. We are at the IIT Alumni Conference. What better way than to ask you about IIT Alumni's contribution in terms of entrepreneurship here in this country? It's nothing less than amazing. I mean, I've been, uh, you know, meeting the people over here, it's just mind-blowing to see the, the talent that's here, how much success they've achieved. I mean, these people have really seeded the, uh, the uh, you know, Indian community entrepreneurship in Silicon Valley. Um, you know, my research has shown that 52% of startups in Silicon Valley were founded by immigrants, with Indians being the dominant uh, you know, founding group. Um, well, it seems like IITians have been you know, the driving force behind a lot of the success of Indian in Silicon Valley. I mean, you know, consider that 15% of all the uh, Indian founded startups were by, by uh, graduates of IITs. And IIT has only graduate 5,000 engineers out of India's 200,000 right now. So such a small, tiny percentage of them have co contributed in such a huge way to uh, Silicon Valley success. So there's nothing less than remarkable. I should ask you because uh, you have played both sides of the field. You were an entrepreneur before you became a professor. Right. right? So you, you have a better perspective, I think. What does it take for individuals, uh, highly skilled individuals, to come here and succeed where they couldn't do it in India? You know, what, what happens here is that this is a fertile ground for entrepreneurship. That um, Indians have gone to other countries also. For example, I went to Louvain, Belgium, Belgium uh, a few months ago. There are a lot of Indians over there um, who have succeeded a lot in industry. But there are almost no startups there. There's almost, I think it's actually zero startups by Indians in, in, uh, in that region of Belgium. So the difference between Belgium and Silicon Valley, uh, which are probably equal in size, is that uh, Silicon Valley provides a very fertile ground for entrepreneurship. That anyone can, and that's the beauty of America, that anyone can come and see, whether they look like you and me, it doesn't matter. I mean, they can have weird accents and, you know, look funny, and, but they can succeed. They can succeed in, in starting companies, they can succeed in business, they can succeed in anything they want to do. This is what the American dream is about. This is why America is a great country it is, because it welcomes immigrants. Well, it, it used to welcome immigrants. I mean, I should qualify myself there. There are lots of problems with the American immigration system right now. But that's what's made this country what it is. So let me pick up from where you just left. Right. Is, you know, since it's still a, a land of opportunity, given an opportunity, I think anybody and everybody will want to come still to right. this country, in spite of all that has happened over the years. This needs to be an open policy for skilled immigrants, which used to exist. But we were expecting that the current administration would open up a lot more. Right. Uh, and you have taken up this cause and you're very passionate about it, you know, can you elaborate on that? Well, the jury's still out. Um, you know, I, I know that um, uh, from what everything I read, Obama was pretty sympathetic towards the plight of immigrants. Uh, I'm disappointed nothing has happened so far and it may just be because the debates are different. But there's a brewing, this is, we're sitting on a powder keg here, that there are over a million, million skilled immigrants and their families right now uh, waiting for green cards and there are almost no visas available. I mean, in this million, about 350, 400,000 are Indians and a big chunk of them are IIT graduates and, and other top-notch graduates. Well, they're all equal here. <laughs> and the problem is that uh, there are only 120,000 visas available per year, and then there's a 7% per country limit. So that India and China have the same per country limit as do Mauritius, as do Iceland, as Australia, who have you know, almost no population. So the result is that where America is experiencing a major brain drain. For the first time ever, America's best and brightest are leaving these shores. I mean, America has never experienced this before. In the early 1900s, in the, uh, the, the turn of the century, you had an outflow from, from Europe. I mean, the, and they lamented the fact that their best and brightest were coming to America. You know, everything from the British, the Irish, the German scientists, everyone came to America. And then in the 60s and the 70s, you had, uh, uh, you know, India's, you know, IITians basically come to America. Those, those are the first, first exports from India. And, you know, you had Indira Gandhi panicked about uh, Indian uh, exports and she was trying to, you know, stop them from leaving. That's how much panic there was about, about the IITians leaving India. Well, guess what's happening right now? That they're headed back. I mean, um, uh, in, in, in numbers like we've never seen before. And like I said, this is a complete disaster for the United States. I want to... Uh ask you as an academician, uh, when you look at students who are still coming from India, regardless of whether from IIT or from other right. institutes, uh, do you see a change in their attitude, in their demeanor, in their knowledge compared to when you came to this country? You know, what I've seen here, maybe, I, mean, I joined Duke about five years ago and I met the outgoing class 
we've always had brilliant students coming in from India. I mean, a lot of my students are IITians, be simply because, uh, you know, they come from one great university to another great university, right? So the difference over here is that five years ago when I used to talk to the students, everyone talked about staying in America. They wanted to make America their permanent home. Now, I talk to the, you know, when I talk to the new, new generation of students who have come here, everyone talks about going back home. In fact, out of a class of uh, 120, I mean, about half of them are foreign nationals, only one or two students said to me that they want to stay here permanently, which was a big, big sh surprise. And this is validated by the research I've done. They go to the National Science Foundation, uh, the historic stay rates for Indian and Chinese PhDs have been very high. Chinese were 92, 93 percent historically, Indians were 85 percent. That's, you know, most of these people stayed permanently. I did a survey of uh, 2,000 students across the United States. The shocking thing was that Indian students, only 9.5% talked about staying permanently. The vast majority wanted to be here between one and five years. You know, I, I guess to pay off the student loans, get some Western experience, and then they wanted to go back. When we asked Indians about where they saw their future being the brightest, this absolutely blew my mind. 86% of them said that the, 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 the brightest future was back home in India. That's a big shift. I think this shift has happened over the last five years or so that they've seen the Indian economy booming, they've seen the paranoia, the xenophobia building in the United States, and you put all of these factors together and they want to go back home. So this is a big benefit for India, because just like India lost by losing these, these you know, skilled people in the 70s, it's now gaining tens of billions of dollars worth of, of mind power and investment, because frankly, uh, a lot of the uh, IITians over here, a lot of the other skilled, skilled Indians have saved a lot of money that they're going back with uh, extensive savings and extensive education, extensive experience, and they're going to now benefit uh, their home countries by going back. But you know, in a global world uh, where America is, uh, is no longer, uh, you know, uh, on the other side with India, actually, you know, we're collaborating on many fronts, this is a unique opportunity that U.S. should realize. Uh, what, where do you think, uh, you know, U.S. can change and benefit? from these resources? And then the U.S. has to do what it's, what's made it this great country. It has to have open policies. It has to not be a protectionist uh, country. It has to op op welcome immigrants. Right now, all it has to do is to expand the number of green cards so the people who are already here. These people are already here working for American companies. Make it easy for them to stay. And immediately, you'd fix half the problem. The other half will still stay because uh, India is still going to be rising. It's still going to have great opportunities. But at least you've leveled the playing field now. You, you're giving people a chance to stay if they want to stay. Vivek, like always, thank you so much. Sure, it was a pleasure to be here.